In the heart of Utah lies the town of Moab, a rock-crawling mecca that we fantasize about returning year after year. We began what was supposed to be an epic off-roading adventure, but as fate would have it, our journey took unexpected turns every day and nearly every minute. Not once, not twice, but countless times, we found ourselves at the mercy of mechanical mishaps, each obstacle testing us. Yet, amidst these challenges, we continued to find ways to overcome and persevere. We would meet a group of family and friends experiencing Moab for the first time. Steve, Garrett, Aaron, and Mike and Mike, who became our lifeline as our trip progressed. Enjoy the film and watch the adventure unfold because the crew still has no idea what's to come. So we just got to Moab for EJS and the first thing that we're going to do, just like our last video, is we're going to slash this tire. This is the same tire that we slashed in our last video. It still has the same glue tread patch on it, the same Colby valve that we installed, and we're going to put an additional slash in it and then wheel some of the iconic Moab trails. Uh, but before we do any wheeling, our sway bar will not disconnect. So um, I don't know what's causing it, the Rubicon automatic sway bar disconnect is prone to failure. Um, a long time ago I bought this Evo manual disconnect and I haven't put it in. Luckily it's just three bolts so um, I grabbed this when we were leaving the house so I'm going to put it in and I really hope that it, it should work. It, it reduce, it eliminates the sway bar actuator completely so it will be completely manual uh, which is so much better. Um, so I think we'll still be able to wheel. We're going to slash this tar patch the tire, and then go wheel Moab rim. On our last big expedition, we took this tire here, slashed it at the beginning of our expedition, patched it with a glue tread sidewall patch, then installed a Colby valve, emergency valve stem, and we went 1,000 hard off-road miles on this glue tread patch right here. This patch is still on the tire. We're going to put an additional slash in the tire and go and wheel some of Moab's iconic trails. So we're at the trailhead to Moab Rim and um, we found out that there's 29 Jeeps coming down. So we are gonna wait because <laughs> that would be just really bad to uh, cause a huge holdup. Um, so we are cooking a meal and then we'll head up Moab Rim, um, which means we might come down Moab Rim in the dark, which can be a little sketchy because uh, if the whole trail's off camber, um, lots of people do roll off of it onto the highway down below, but we'll be okay. We'll just take account of that and uh, yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be an adventure.
made it to the top of Moab Rim. Uh, this is my first experience wheeling in Moab, so it was scarier than I anticipated. Um, I was trying to spot Taylor and learned I have a lot to learn about spotting a vehicle. I don't really know where the tipping point is or exactly where the wheels should align for it to safely move through an obstacle. So that was a challenge, but we got through it and hopefully I will learn so we can keep going. <laughs>morning the gladiator would struggle to start it took us 20 minutes of trying to finally get it running it was running horribly we had plans to meet with garrett and his family to wheel today we drove the five minutes to their hotel and the jeep misfired the entire way there it was very low on power but we headed to the slick rock campground to see what we could find out thinking it was computer related we pulled the ground off the battery 20 minutes later the jeep would fire up and run perfectly this was garrett's family's first time wheeling moab so we hit fins and things. Okay, so we are on the fins and things trail and uh, we met up with Garrett, who I know from social media and his family um, and some of their friends and stuff. They're in a gladiator behind us in a really sick 72 blazer. So we'll get you guys some shots of that. This is a super easy trail, which is perfect. They've never been to Moab before and uh, McKaylee's probably gonna get some drive time. So it'll be fun.
So we're gonna use somebody else's winch to turn us around so that we don't zap our battery. So um, the guys we were wheeling with, they brought us to a hotel. This hotel is the closest hotel to a U-Haul uh, place. So worst case scenario, we're going to rent a U-Haul and a trailer, <laughs> drive the U-Haul out to the desert, load the Jeep up, and drive it home. Definitely needs a fuel pump. Um, we switched relays with the Jeeps. Uh, tested the fuses, everything, everything's good. Our fuel pump is not cycling. Um, like, we can't hear it cycling. And then Garrett's Jeep, we can hear it cycling. So, uh, we're pretty positive that that's what it is. Um, and it's Easter Sunday, so no place is open. <laughs> so I don't even know if there's a fuel pump in this town. But we're going to find out tomorrow. Ideally, we'd be able to fix it, um, either on the desert or at a shop. Um, and then continue our trip. So who knows? Right now, if we don't have a car or a vehicle because it's in the desert, so we're going to go on a jog, which we brought all our trail running gear with us. So we're going to jog to a uh, grocery store and get some food. This dude is the guy we were talking about last night in the hotel, yep. uh, Garrett. Um, him and his crew are lifesavers. They're he's taking us to our broken down Jeep right now. Um, I think that we're gonna be able to get a free tow to the nearest dealer from our uh, insurance. We'll see. Um, I tried to talk to them, but they wouldn't talk to me until I was at the Jeep, so I could like send them a pen. I think. Uh, so we're gonna be hanging out with them, wheeling with them. Um, you know, the adventure goes on. It's gonna be a dope week. <laughs> we were supposed to be leaving soon, but. Instead, we're going to be doing some dope trails, so... Yep. Thanks to the homies. The Jeep's still here. We were wondering. I don't know if the, there's a 40-inch brand-new Nitto with a brand-new beadlock in the back, though, so I don't know if that's still there. Is Looks it? like it is. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. <laughs> that's crazy. All right, we're heading to Hell's Revenge. We canceled the tow. Well, they weren't willing to drive on the gravel, <laughs> so they canceled their own tow. Um, and then once it dies down a little bit, we're gonna just tow. It's only like four miles from here. Tow it to the shop. Tomorrow we gotta go two hours to the dealer to get the fuel pump. Bring the fuel pump to the shop. <laughs> and hopefully we'll be good. Hopefully they can get it figured out. Until then, we're hanging out with these guys. So we're gonna go wheels Hell's Revenge. 
And then there's a stock uh, jail behind us, which is gonna hit health too. So that would be sick. So yeah, still a good day. It's like one million degrees out, so <laughs> it's really nice. So yeah, <laughs> hopefully nothing breaks.
Price Utah, which is the closest dealer to Moab that was able to get us a fuel pump. The shop that we towed the Jeep to last night just called and said they are able to start the Jeep with starter fluid. So that is a is a really good sign that it's just the fuel pump. Plus all the other symptoms that we already know that we can't hear the pump priming and then Garrett's Jeep, which we're in right now, he has a really loud fuel pump prime. So um, yeah, 99%, it's gonna fix it. Then we're gonna wheel. <laughs> so that's, that's awesome. Stay these, tuned. These homies right here saved it. Thank you, yeah, guys. Stay tuned. You'll be seeing some sick stuff coming up. <laughs> oh, yeah. We delivered the fuel pump to the shop and we went to Finns and Things to finish the trail. We received a phone call while we were out on the trail from the shop. The Jeep was fixed. We exited the trail and headed into town. Okay, so we're at West Auto Repair and Sales in Moab, Utah. We brought him to part and he had the Jeep fixed in like two hours. Well, we'll see. <laughs> so the trip's still on. Dope. After we picked up the Jeep, naturally, we headed to Hell's Revenge. Unfortunately, a few miles in, the Jeep shut off. Same exact problem. We would try to get it running again to no avail. The next morning, we returned with starter fluid and cam position sensors. Nothing worked. So, we called Rory from Trailmater. this adventure in the next video because it's just constantly evolving we have no idea how it's going to conclude uh, Rory with Trailmater just saved us off of Hells um, the truck is at the base of Hells I'm gonna have it towed out of there by just like a regular tow truck tomorrow two hours north uh, to a dealer we're gonna rent a car we're gonna drive home but for now we're heading to 
a new trail. We're gonna wheel with Garrett again and Aaron, Woo! the homie, Yahoo! who have been hooking us up this whole freaking week that we've been here. Um, and then we'll keep you guys posted in the next video on the unfolding of the Gladiator. So we'll see. Will we make another Rocklander?